Hello, I'm Greg Watson, and we're going to be talking about green belt training for Lean Six Sigma. This esteemed course is going to begin with a little discussion of the history. So we have some context in terms of how Lean Six Sigma developed, what it really means, and so forth. So what I want to do is just to, to give you a little of the historical context for what was happening. This goes back to the early 1980s. At that point in time, the American semiconductor industry was being attacked by the Japanese semiconductor industry. Prices were dropping rapidly. A chip that was sold in America, 246K DRAM, was sold for $14. The Japanese chip coming into the U.S. market with the same capability was being sold for $5. Clearly, the American semiconductor industry was not going to last long. Many of the U.S. companies were actually going out of business. And so in Austin, Texas, the Semiconductor Technology Consortium, the companies that created semiconductors in the United States, where the technology originated in 1958, banded together and pooled their resources to create a common way to deal with quality to combat the Japanese methodologies. The Japanese methodologies had developed through the Union of Japanese Scientists and Engineers over approximately a 30-year period of time. It had been a scientific set of inquiry that step by step was building up a very uh, complex system, but that was very, very effective in terms of delivering quality in the parts. So Japanese parts were not only cheaper, but they were much higher quality. So in Japan, they had worked on quality of the product as well as quality of the process and drove cost out of both. On the American side, what they wanted to do was take a scientific approach, but recreate it all from scratch use American ingenuity to have a statistically best practice that was developed from across the practices of all the different consortia companies. By the middle of the 1960s, Motorola was one of those companies which was suffering the most. At a meeting of the executive team, they realized, our quality sucks, direct quote. And what they said was that the Japanese really need to be effectively developed uh, defeated in a way that would allow American industry to become superior again and to rise up and not to lose their technology. One of the challenges was how do we make that change happen? Because they were looking at this rate of change that was necessary and it was no longer a linear rate of change. You couldn't just do something 22 percent a year for instance. What they had to do was do things faster and not only that, but to do things stronger. And instead of a linear transformation, they ended up with an exponential in, in transformation in quality that was necessary. And so this term, Six Sigma, is actually describing an exponential transformation in terms of quality. Six Sigma was founded as a methodology through Motorola's Six Sigma Research Institute, which was put together by a consortium of companies to develop a standard method in America. Those companies included Kodak, Texas Instruments, Digital uh, uh, Computers, Harris Semiconductor, and IBM. However, not all the companies stayed with Motorola. Some of them considered themselves competitors to no Motorola. And so other versions of Six Sigma developed, but not necessarily under the Motorola brand, which was uh, copyrighted by them, called Six Sigma. So Compact Computer had its own version, Hewlett Packard was doing its thing, and IBM had their own program. And so as we look at these organizations, each was studying how do they actually create a company that's more competitive in terms of quality and cost versus the Japanese companies that they were competing with in industry. So in the mid-1990s, early 1990s, Motorola had developed their system. They had trained it, they had piloted it in some of their supplier companies, and they were aggressively moving to get this methodology used throughout their whole supply chain, as well as among select customers. Successful deployments within the Six Sigma Research Institute included both Motorola and Texas Instruments. Shortly afterwards, ABB Transformers and Allied Signal both used this methodology as a turnaround strategy to improve their quality and business effectiveness. By the mid-1990s, it had spread out. General Electric then took it on, and just one month later, Nokia Mobile Phones applied it. Both of them were using it for company-wide problem management. In the late 1990s, Six Sigma Academy had spun out of Motorola as a consulting firm, and they were packaging the methodology up, and they sold it to a number of companies in different industries who were practicing the same methodology.
So American Express, DuPont, and many other companies were using these methods in a variety of production types of processes, as well as in service use. In 1998 to 1999, the methodology was donated by Six Sigma Academy to the American Society for Quality. The purpose of that donation was to encourage global expansion of the methodology and widespread application. In 2000 to 2001, the methodology had been converted into a standardized training program by the American Society for Quality, and in 2001 it was being introduced by ASQ in Europe and Asia. Those lectures, those original lectures, were actually the first formal lectures given in many countries about the Six Sigma methodology, and they were provided to the world partner national quality organizations of the American Society for Quality. Upon seeing this, many companies were then realizing that perhaps they should do something. Motorola had put enough of their materials into public domain that some companies, like in Europe, Philips and Siemens, were developing their own versions of the training program, adapted based on how they had developed quality in their organizations. Even national organizations, like in China, created expert committees to say, can we have a standard model for use in our country? Then, in the early 2003, I believe it was, Michael George introduced the concept Lean Six Sigma. And what he was doing was drawing a more explicit relationship between the marriage of lean methods, which are better known as the Japanese quality methods related to the Toyota production system, and the Six Sigma methodologies. Now, interestingly enough, from the very beginning, those methodologies were all contained within the Motorola system because Motorola, Hewlett Packard, Texas Instruments, IBM, all had divisions in Japan and had all learned how those methodologies were used synergistically in Japanese quality. But it became much more explicitly evident when the term Lean Six Sigma was actually developed. So that gives you a little understanding of the history, if you will, of where Lean Six Sigma came from. What we're gonna to turn to next is, what does Lean Six Sigma really mean? Thank you. We'll see you soon.